Okay? Try to do this, yeah. You, I might need your heavy duty tissue, but I'm okay. This is a powerful moment for Sam Curtin. I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> because Sam is exactly where he wants to be. But to understand why this place is so important to him, you'll need to learn about one of the most difficult times in his life. Lake Anna is home for Sam. After all these years, managed to still keep all of my own fingers. Preparing meals pairs well with the tranquility of the lake. It is really a, um, a way to escape everything else that's going on around you. H4. It's where he and his wife Susan play board games to relax. H5. And they have a healthy love of competition. You sunk it. Yes. January 31st, 2017 at about 11.30 in the morning. They would need that competitive spirit when Sam's health took an unexpected turn. It was one of those moments you won't forget because part of the message was go get your affairs in order. Idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, or IPF, is a cruel, scarring lung disease. I felt like I had never been sick a day in my life. A grim two to five years to live. Once I was diagnosed, it felt like I was coming apart at the seams. His breathing had started to get, get worse. His cough had worsened. He was more short of breath with activities. Dr. Ariel, the medical director for the lung transplant program at the Inova Fairfax Medical Campus. Typically with, with IPF, we would think of transplant window being in, in the order of months. In his case, I would have thought it was is in the order of weeks to months. Sam's care team made the decision to place him on the wait list. C3? Then, yep. 9.03, the morning of July 9th. I was in my office and Susan was downstairs in her office. I knew the number was from the hospital, but I wasn't expecting it was the call. The words he'd been waiting for. We got lungs for you. And... Wait, hold on. What? 3 a.m. July 10th, an eight-hour procedure. You got your new lungs. I never doubted. I never had the thought of what happens if this doesn't work. My donor family had experienced grief at an unbelievable level. I couldn't be more thankful to them for what I was able to do now. I was breathing on my own. But it's the person he's never been able to thank that brings him back to the National Donor Memorial in Richmond for his annual visit. I know that at 9.03 this morning, my phone's gonna sound an alarm because that was the moment I got the call. Okay. He and Susan yep. I'm good. mustered the strength oh. to walk in. With so many names. The one that just says baby girl. There's a baby boy down there too. It is overwhelming and humbling. <laughs> and you have an alarm going off. <laughs> it's okay. You're fulfilling somebody's dream. His message to his donor. I love you. I don't know, I really don't know how a person who has never met me could love me so much for me to have these lungs. It is absolutely pure. I want them and their family to know how much I love them. Now, Sam's purpose. I want to be the poster child for Make Every Breath Count. I want people to see that through organ donation, through giving somebody else a second chance at life, that they can help somebody else do that same thing. He and his brother. He was just a great kid, and he was, he was friendly, and you just had warm feelings about it. Delightful. He was uh, our first child. But that's his girlfriend. Pleasant memories, pictures, diplomas, letters stored for 25 years in a memory box, easing the sting. It's Boykin, 1970 to 1998. 
This is a letter that I wrote to him. Okay, this, it's dated September the 13th, 1993. Through written word, sharing her pride that her son spends time in prayer and Bible study. I would like to make a pilgrimage to the Holy Land. Maybe after you have finished graduate school in the year 2000, we could take that trip. That trip with their son, Samuel Boykin Hunter Jr. never happened. 1998 may seem like a long time ago. However, the pain still cuts deep as Dr. Samuel and Serena Hunter of Richmond remember the beginning at three months old. We were sort of playing around. I was listening to, to some music with him and uh, his eyes was, were jaundice, which said to me that he's hemolyzing. After a series of tests. He was positive. Sickle cell disease. I think one of the physicians made the comment, he probably will not live to see his 30th birthday. The doctor's prediction eventually ringing true. He had very much of what I describe as a normal childhood. And uh, the college years were very, were good as well. Boykin was obsessed with learning. Okay, this is Fork Union Military Academy. He's here on the end. Then Xavier University of Louisiana. Graduated with honors, if I make no mistake. And so I told him, I said, son, I'm real proud of you. He said, I'm proud of me too, Dad. I did better than you, either you or Mom did in undergraduate school. Next, a master's of psychology. Ohio University. Then acceptance into law school at Ohio State. Academically, Boykin's life soaring, but personally, the stress of his studies possibly taking a toll on his body, enabling the insidious disease to ultimately win. I remember very clearly the day that he passed away. Although he was sick, he was still looking forward. He said, Mom, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm just so tired. He was coming up the stairs and I was going downstairs. And I said, well, just come on and lay down and just take a long nap. Actually, he was completing the thesis for uh, his master's. It was open down here on the dining room table. Mm -hmm. And just never woke up. Never woke up. So it was very peaceful. And this is me and Sam. The hunters display pictures proudly. The sickle cell trait can pass down through generations. Sickle cell disease is a genetic disorder when a child inherits two genes, one from each parent, causing round red blood cells to turn into rigid sickle-shaped cells not able to move effortlessly through the body, resulting in fatigue, acute pain, and organ damage. There is no known cure. The CDC estimates there are 100,000 Americans with the disease, with approximately 90% being African American. Yes. Dr. Wally Smith, the director of the Adult Sickle Cell Program at VCU Health. Is it just a black disease? No. Anybody in the United States should know their sickle cell status. And so you need to know your status because you may have a baby. And if you have a baby with somebody who has a trait, you have a chance of producing a child with sickle cell disease. He was further able to stimulate critical thinking. The hunters also encouraged testing. And you need to be aware of the consequences. And can you deal with it? And can you help a child grow through to adulthood? And will you do it knowing that if it doesn't go uh, the way you hoped it would go, it's, it's pain with it. And, it. and that pain lasts a long, long time. All of Boykin's hard work paying off in the end. That law degree he never walked across the stage to receive. The College of Law faculty has voted unanimously to confer the degree of Juris Doctor on your son, Samuel Borkin Hunter. No regrets, a life fully lived. Although he was 28 when he passed away, it was uh, a life that he enjoyed. I think that he would encourage individuals to do their best and not worry too much about obstacles. Too many of us do. And so you just take courage from his, um, his life and what he did and how he did it.
I want you to feel. I want you to feel it. There you go. There you go. This is not an easy workout. The high pull, the reverse grip row. It's a trainer who is pushing hard. Finish it. Using tough love. You are trying to get two full rounds of this in. Pushing your muscles you to go. their you limits. Feel the difference? Yeah. Good. She worked us today hard. 10 years ago, Erica Porter, a former Women of Wrestling superhero world champion, and go down and up, opened the doors to Endorphasm Gym in Midlothian. You're going to lift up. Because she lives for the high, which she calls E Strong. Endorphasm is the moment during movement that you feel all things are possible. And to make you feel it too. Shaking. That's living. But uses a different approach during one on one sessions. Your breath is what you take with you. A softer voice. It's with you all the time. Three, two. But still the one. same medicine movement. And we as humans were designed to move. And when we stop moving, we die. And I'm telling you that you are that strong. Well, you're that and you're pushing me a little. Just what Chrissy Wingfield desperately needed. Yeah, I wish I had known about this. I would have been here much yeah. sooner. Chrissy yeah. is fighting back after the mother of two from Chesterfield got the wind knocked out of her. I was diagnosed in 2019 with breast cancer. It was stage three. I gained like 30 pounds. My hips started to hurt. I, I just, I wasn't moving enough. I, I knew something needed to change. Unable to keep up with her two boys, Chrissy turned to the strength within the walls of this red room. Because I knew she was going to be here for me. She helps with that commitment. And of course, look at me, movement. I don't know if it was someone else besides Erica if I would be doing this because it, it truly is, it's empowering to know everything she's been through and that I've been through and we can kind of have that bond. So that's very, it's very helpful. I am a cancer patient. That's three. Erica and Chrissy have a deep understanding of what it truly means to fight this fierce disease. I was diagnosed with stage four breast cancer in June of 2020. Erica created the nonprofit Endorphasm Foundation in October 2020. You don't understand the impact that it has on you until you're living it. Um, and so I think for her to have somebody that she can talk to and connect with that has um, been there is also incredibly valuable for her in this moment. Chrissy now realizing physical activity. Heart rate's getting up, you feel alive? Yeah. Good. Seeing herself in Erica's reflection. Two more. Chrissy vows to live fully and spread awareness. The biggest thing I can tell women out there is to please make sure they're doing their monthly checks at home. I respect and I honor each person that walks here and, and trusts me. And how they walk out of here is really important to me.